Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Could you see the screen? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So today we're gonna we're gonna keep continue to the chapter eight. So chapter eight is uh, so now we can cover about the concatenating the axis like a data set. So concatenation is a kind of like a binding or link together, link the data set like a data frame in this case, or maybe series. So there is actually uh, in NumPy package, there is a actually a function called concatenate function. So we can try to do the concatenate function by using the NumPy for the NumPy arrays. So as you can see here, if you can have uh, this kind of array, and then if you try to using the this concatenate option, and then I'll try to keep these two to the link together based on the axis one means the column bind, like a like a C bind in in R. Okay, so that's the how is how it look like. So in this one and this one, ARR ARR has been linked together like a binding based on the column. Okay, but the thing is, in in the general kind of uh, this kind of a concatenation has uh, some of the several kind of uh, conditions like uh, these three conditions. So maybe sometimes we can have uh, indexing different indexes between the these two axes. In that case, is how we can concatenating it, and or concatenate ch uh, chunks of the data can be identifiable, or maybe axis contains the data set needs to be preserved. Like a, like a those name or those column name or row index name gonna be preserved or overlapping kind of each other. In these cases, we have to thinking about the, how we can concatenate in this data set. In that case, we can using the pen in the pandas package. There is a function called concat. It is also kind of a concatenate function in num5. So as you can see here. Suppose that we have a three series series data set with a no index overlap. So that means, as you can see here, S1 is the row index is A, B, and then S2 is a C, D, E, and then F, G. So these are the actually these three series data set has a no index overlap, right? So in that case, how we can combine these two, these three things. This one is just kind of a simply combine based on the law, like this, right? So here is S1, this is S2, this is S3. So it's a kind of a, just kind of concatenating based on the law. So that is actually called in the, in R is a kind of a R bind function in R, right? And also we can try to concatenate in, in this case by using the X column. So in that case, how we can how we can do this? So so in case of the uh, R bind, so there is a actually S1 is this, and then S2 is like this. So that means we have this one gonna be the S1, and then these are the S2, and then these are the S3, okay? Do you understand what this means, right? Like, okay, yeah, S2 yeah, is sure, like sure. this. It's, it's, it's quite yeah, clear, yeah. so. Okay. Yeah, quite clear kind of things. So this one for the S2 value, S1 value, and F2. So it's a kind of a R and low bind kind of together. It's a more complicated, but it is easy to understand why these things happen. And also there is a, a no overlap with the, this one. This one is actually kind of an outer join because it's a kind of a kind of a union function kind of thing. So when you try to do the PD concast and S1 and S3, so S1 is a AB, 
A, B, 0, 1. This is S1. And then S3 is F, G, 5, 6. So how we can concatenate those two things means we have a same thing like R bind like this, right? And then when we try to do the column bind, that means it's kind of a union, okay? So these are the S1. And then the column going to be the, this one going to be keep together and then this going to be really added like this. Okay. And also when we try to do the inner join like this, that means we only keep the, those two, those A and B kind of thing because both both S1 and S4 actually have a, have a AB value. Right, it's kind of an inner joint. Okay, this is another way you can concaten using the concatenating like an inner joint or outer joint like a union. Okay, and also like uh, if we can, if we have a kind of a uh, concatenating pieces are not identifying in the result. In that cases, we can actually try to do the creative, created the hierarchical index like a. Dejonating the key like this. Okay. And then when we try to do that, it's a concatenating like this. These are the kind of our original uh, row index. And then we also have another another key index like a one, two, three. So it looks like a hierarchical index. So this one is one, two, three is the key one, which means the higher, higher level index. And then AB, ABFG gonna be the low, lowest level of the index. So it's like a two level hierarchical index. And then uh, like we did in the last week, if we can unstack the, these things, we can actually have a lowest, lowest kind of a key index gonna be moved to the column. And then we will have uh, this kind of a pivoting kind of table result. Okay. And then also we can try to combining the, this, car, this series by using the column function and then assign the key for this. So when we try to do the access to the column, like a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6, and then we can each kind of a concatenation, we can actually designating the key. So this key gonna be used the kind of a column, column index in this case, because we actually combine concatenating this one as a based on the column, like a R bind kind of, uh, not R bind, like a C bind kind of options, right? And the other one is uh, we can also has the same logic to the data frame objects. Because uh, in, in here, this one is actually tried to series, but it's the same thing for the con uh, data frame. Same approaches can be applied to the data frame. Like if we have uh, this one, two, and then this DF1 and DF2, and then when we try to concatenate in those two things based on the column, and then uh, if we have a level one and level two, this means we have uh, this kind of a column hierarchical index, like a column, column level, okay? And then also we can try to do, do the some of the using the dictionary of the object, like uh, instead of the list function, maybe we can try to designating the this one, like a level one for the DF1 and level two gonna be the DF2. And then we can try to try to concatenating based on the column. We will have a level one for the D, level one come from the DF1, and then a level two come from the DF2, like a DF2 and DF1, right? And then concatenating, like a link together. Okay. And then uh, the other one is uh, kind of also the same thing, like a like uh, we can also try to using the this concatenation using the key and then we can also designating about the names argument. We can actually try to designating the name for the each column index 
right? Upper level gonna be the level one and two, and then lower level is level one, two, three, four kind of a lower index level, like a like a name, attribute name, and then also if we have a low index that's not containing uh, any relevant data, so that means in here, if we can have uh, this kind of a SF1 and SF2, uh, uh, not DF1 and DF2 kind of column, like a randomly assigned value column. If we can try to ignore the index, like a low index is the true. So that means we can newly newly indicating, newly creating the new low index without having these things. And then concatenating just in order, like a DF1 and DF2, like a one, two, three, four. But the thing is in case of the column, it just a kind of a kind of a concatenating based on the column on column index name, like this, B, B and A and D. Okay, so that's the how it thinks. C does DF two does not contain the C column, so we have an AM value in here. Because at the bottom line, this this is actually come from the DF two, and then this low index gonna be newly created because we have ignore previous we we have ignore index for the each original data frame. Okay. So that's the kind of a concatenating function and then uh, we actually cover the, all of the, these things and then uh, this one. So you can just uh, check, feel free to check on the, this table about the, how uh, con uh, concatenating, pandas concatenating function arguments uh, try, can, can do, okay? And then the next one is uh, try to combine the data with the overwrap. So that means if we can have an overwrap, both data have uh, some, fully or partly overlap. In this case, how we can combine those two take uh, data. So in here, as we can see here, uh, all of the, these things are the fully overlapped together. Even if the, the order is the different, but these are the actually fully contained. So in this one is, uh, in this case, we can try to combine these things by, by based on the a where function in the numpy package. So this is actually if condition. And then this one is the if it if is true. And this one is if is false. Okay. So like a uh, is NA is the true, we can take the B value. So that means when you be looking at the A here and here, we can say that we if, if uh, in the in the A A data frame uh, series we do not have a value in the this index, so we can take the this B value because uh, if it's the force, right? And then when we're looking at the B value here and here. A already have a value for the 4.5, but B does not have any value. So we will have a, uh, we will have a 4. Point, uh, 4.5 is in here, right? So that's the how it works, okay? So how this one is says is if there is a no value, we can take the other, uh, we can take the value from the other other data series. If not, we can take the original one. So that's the how it works. Okay. And then we can follow the order of the column index based on the A, because we have a we have a if condition based on the A. So we have a, this kind of a low index order. Okay. That's the how B gonna be in this position. Because the B is the disposition in this uh in the A series. Okay. So now yeah, we I, can I, I, we can try to, yeah. Yeah, yes. I'm, I'm like this condition might be very yeah, useful, especially if you are working with a very large data set. It could save you a lot of time. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh and also if uh right now. 
there is a, actually another thing we can use about the combine first method here. Because uh, it in that case, if you wanted to line up the value by index, we can actually using the combine first method. So that means we have a, a function here and then a combine first to the B in this case. And then this means is that we actually try to line up like this based on the this B kind of a column order, A, B, C, D, E, F, like this. And then it's the same thing, like uh, combine first means we can take the we can take the first value, first available or valid value, right? Like this. So compared to the this outcome and this outcome, okay. And also this one is more look like a, this one is more like a data frame format compared to the array. Okay, that's the kind of another differences we can identify. And then combine first function also to do the same thing with the by column by column in a data frame. So if we have uh, this DF1 and DF2 kind of function, which is the overlapping with the column A and B to the both data set, if we can use the combine first value here, we can only we can take about the we can take about the all of the these possible value, but the thing is we can take the uh we we take the uh value that comes first. So that means both in this one, one point zero gonna be the final outcome in here because this one actually comes first before the this DF two. So we can take the this 1.0 gonna be taken. So that in that way we can keep combining these two table based on the first first value gonna be included. First identifying value from the DF1 and DF2 gonna be included into the, our result table. Okay. That's the how it works. So it's uh, quite useful to combining to the only one to keep the very first identified value gonna be preserved, okay? So that's the how it works. And then the next uh, next section is, uh, okay, this one is actually for, for, from now, uh, so far we actually cover about the, how we can try to join and merging and concatenating or combining the data set. Now we can try to think about the reshaping and then the pivoting, which is the more like a more like a data data transformation. Okay. How we can try to transform our data set for our analytic purpose. So these are the two kind of things we can do, like a reshaping and pivoting, which is quite the same. Like a data transportation means we can actually have a two cases, like a wide, wide format data to the long format, or vice versa, like a long format to the wide. Okay, so. There is a two two kind of a important function like a stack and unstack. We already covered these two in the previous section. Like a stack is the rotated the pivoting from the column to the row, and then unstack is the vice versa, like a row to the column. Okay, stack is column to the row, and then unstack is the row to column. Okay, so in this case, if we have uh, this data set, for example, like a number is the is column it, name. Is it, is it, yeah. So it just, is it just like transposition? Could you say I mean, is it, is it is it similar to just tran transposing the data or something like this? Like what do you mean by transform? 
like transpose, like uh, to transpose a matrix or stuff like that. Is it almost? Oh, uh, same? yeah, similar. Yeah. 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 But the thing is, that this one is a more like a transpose the data set based on the some specific conditions, like a column grouping by the column or grouping by the row. Oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's a rotating, but rotating based on the some specific column or specific row. That's the difference. In metrics, we only have a we only have a one single index kind of situation, right? Yeah. Maybe it might be possible to the three dimensional multi three dimensional matrices can be possible. That also cannot be transposed. But the thing is, the index by itself is a single index, right? Yeah. Yeah. But this one can be possible to the even if we have a multiple index like this. In this case, yeah. So that's the kind of a difference. Okay. So yeah. in here we have uh, this data set like a uh, uh, row index gonna be the uh, uh, column index gonna be the number, and then a uh, row index is the state. And then if we can kind of a stack method, which is the column gonna be become to the row, right? This, that means this column gonna be moved here as a row index, like a lowest index. And then this one is how it transform like a wide to the long with a hierarchical index, okay? And then on stack gonna be the returning back to the, the original one. So we're gonna move this one, gonna be moved back to here. So that means the long to the wide. That's the how stack and on stack is works. But both sides actually look work like a pair. Okay. So that's the kind of thing. And also another thing we can do is uh, we can actually detonating about the level of the index. So in this case, maybe if we have uh, this kind of a multi-level, uh, like, a, like a hierarchical index kind of table, but if we have uh, any kind of uh, argument in the parentheses, we actually have a lowest index level gonna be transformed into the wide format. But if we can detonate into the level zero, which is the this one, like a Ohio and Colorado one, this one gonna be the transform into the row, like a row, right? So it's the kind of difference. So this one gonna be preserved as a row index, and then a higher key one kind of attribute gonna be becomes to the row, a uh, color, I mean, in this case. So you can detonating the what kind of a specific level you wanted to transform, stack and unstack kind of things. Okay. It is also the same thing in here. If we if we have um if we have a different kind of a different kind of a uh row number, like uh, S1 and S2 is the different. We can you can also try to concatenating like this and then uh, looking at the key to those two. And then when we try to unstack the this one, that means we have a, a B C D E. And then maybe in case of the one, like a S1 has a, does not have a E value, so this one gonna be the NA. And then the same thing for the DF the data uh S2 has the uh, NA value for the uh, column A and B. And then we can revert back to the stack function has the same result for the these two, right? And then a uh, drop NA force means if we have a uh, NA value like this, if in the, in the previous example, we actually removed the those NA values column uh, low in this case when we try to stack. But we can also, by using the drop NA force, we can keep preserving all of the, these column 
uh, column attributes into the both A and B. Okay. As a low, low, uh, lowest low index. So also the, in the data frame, we can also try to do the same thing. Like uh, we have to try to do the uh, same uh, data index, like uh, Ohio and number one, two, three. And then we can try to detonate in the column index like this, name side, this one, right? And then uh, when we try to unstack the state, which means this Ohio and Colorado, we have a left for the Ohio and Colorado and right for the Ohio and Colorado. So these two actually low to the transform to the column as a, as a lowest level index like this at the bottom here, right? And then also we can try to stack the level based on the side, which is the those two up to the top. And then this left and right uh, column index gonna be moved to the this one as a lowest index. So that's the reason why we have a left and right for the one and left and right to the two and left and right to the three. So this one is a kind of a, a little bit different kind of a transform pivoting or rotating table based on the these kind of a different level of the function, like a hierarchical indexing uh, specification. You can specify what kind of a level index name you want to transform or pivoting. So these kind of function does not have a, as far as I understand, R can do not have any kind of hierarchical index. Maybe I have to double check or search Google search about the R is the possible to the hierarchical indexing kind of approaches. But as far as I know, I haven't used these kind of hierarchical indexes system data, data structure in R. I think that this one is uh, quite unique for the Python. And then uh, this, if once you can get used to it, this kind of uh, hierarchical index table or data frame gonna be very useful to to, flex, uh, to transform your data set, whatever level you want, based on the, your index level. So it's quite useful function. So, and then the next one is, uh, we can try to pivoting the long to wide, which is the another one we can do. So here is the, here is the data set about the, in here, we actually reading the CSV file and then we can actually location and then detonating the column name for the CSV file has a has a year and year and quarter and GDP and inflation and unemployment rate like this, and then it looked like a kind of a, a kind of a time series data set, right? By the quarterly quarter time series data set. And then by using the period index, we can actually combine these two year and quarter uh, uh, quarter column together. And then as a period, like a time series kind of a period data set. And then we can converting this one as a timestamp like this. And then now we have uh, uh, this, this one as a low index name by using the pump method. And then we can try to re-indexing the column name, like this, the item, and then date. So, so now we have a row index as a date, and then a column index as an item. So our column index has the real GDP and inflation and an employment rate as a item, item name. So we can also use, also now we have a good data frame. We can try to reshaping this one based on the stack. So when we try to do that is a kind of a reset the index. So that means we can using the, this low index name as a, another column here. 
and then and then we can have a value in here and then we can have a stack function so each each this column gonna be converting into the row for the each quarter and then each value gonna be assigned okay that's the how we can transform the data frame data set like a paper things and then this one is actually what we call about the how we can transform to the wide to the long right with the with the time series and and columns or order okay and then and then another another function we can use is the uh, in the in the previous one we actually tried to using the stack and unstack function to to peopling the wide and long or long to wide kind of thing but in pandas we also using the people functions in pandas for the data frame so index gonna be the date and then a column gonna be the item and then the value is the value it's gonna be the automatically transform to the data set as the peopling based on the long to wide because this one is a long but now we have a wide function wide wide format data table like this okay and then also now we have uh, this kind of uh, another value data set in here assigned for the this long data set and then we can try to index in the date for the this one as a row column and then a column name gonna be the item so all of the these three and then we have a value for the all of the this value gonna be assigned as a highest level and then we have this kind of hierarchical index, column index, gonna be created. So this item gonna be the lowest level for the column item, and then a value one and two gonna be the high key, highest key, uh, key column index. Okay. That's the, how it works. And then we can also try to set by using the set index function, like a date and item, and then unstacking the item. That means we can try to combine uh, combine those item value based on the this date kind of time series data set as a wide format. It's quite confusing, but if you can get used to it and then try to follow the how this gonna be the transform from the previous uh previous uh, data set by comparing to the previous result and then the current result, you can try to figure out the how why this one can be possible to come uh, transform. Okay. And then the uh, last one is the wide to long format in this one is the in case of the data frame we have a this kind of a data frame in this example this one is the wide function so each has the one observation in a row so now we have a id bar like a we have a pandas we have a melt function it is also also the same function for the melt in r in r we also have a melt function like a reshape I think that you shape two package, I guess. Because uh, in our package, we have a reshape and reshape two. Yeah, we yeah, have a, these yeah. two different, yeah, different packages. These two packages actually have a pretty the same similar function, but I think the melt function is the you know, like a reshape two package, I guess. So oh, okay. melt, by using the melt function, Python also has the math function. So using the RD bars as a key for the this one. And then we can have a, have a AAA for the all of the these things and BBB for the key, CCC for the key. So this one is the wide through the wrong, like based on the this column variable and key, right? is organized 
And then also we can try to do the by using the pivot function. We can actually designating the index gonna be the key, column is the variable name, and then the value is the value. So we can have a returning back to the original one, like a long to white, right? So when we try to do the reset indexes, we're gonna move to the this row index name as a key, as a column, and then we have a new row index name gonna be created as a variable in here. And then we can also try to do the melting using the value bar is the A and B. So that means we can only choose, without C, we can only try to pivoting pivoting the A and B column only, like a value bar is the, just choosing the A and B, right? And then also we can use the use the this melt function without any group identifier, like a value bar is the A and B and C. In this case, we can also have a, this kind of a same result. And then we can also detonating the key and A and B. That means key gonna be come first, and then rest of that gonna be the arrange at the bottom, like a like a long function. So these are the kind of how you can transform the data frame or series and then the array function. And throughout the chapter eight, we keep practicing about the how we can transform and manipulating our data set by using the pandas data transformation and some of the NumPy functions. So these are the end of the chapter eight. And then uh, do you have any questions? I think that most of the, these function and then uh, these result is very straightforward. So yeah, yeah, I quite, just want yeah. you to, to keep practicing these functions and then see how it works. Just, just, just keep practicing by yourself. Because uh, there is a, uh, actually this example is a uh, very clear, but the thing is without, without using this function for the, your actual data analysis, it is uh, not the possible to fully understand about the, how this works. But, yeah, but yeah. the thing, but what is the good thing is the, all of the, this function is, is a very similar in the R function. So you can, it is also worthwhile to compare to the, how data gonna be manipulating in differently in Python and R, okay? Yeah. So this is it. And then let me 